hate puppies. Good podcast. I feel threatened. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House. Yet another week here with our fantastic mustaches on our face, for better or worse. Troy, I see you rubbing your mustache on the mic. Is that yeah. working? Is that is that happening for you? Can anybody pick it up? Nope. Nope. Troy's mustaches. No. Must be two weeks still. Full blown week. Not like the abuse I took this weekend, though. I got t- I got crushed this weekend for my <laughs> my mustache. I I did not expect that. I thought that uh, the camaraderie of the group would would hold hold Pat and everybody would would want to just help me and 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 get my mustache to the so next level. No, I mean, it's straight, a pack of wolves. Straight hate. Yeah, straight Chomping. hate. Done. And it came from I the mortician of all people was yeah. the first one to throw the first the stone. Mortician. You know that that Mr. Burns looking dude decided <laughs> to make fun of my look. I was not pleased with that. As he showed up here yesterday in suit pants with suspenders and a sweater and cowboy boots, looking like a straight mortician. Yeah, but if my mortician's not in a sweater on a Sunday with suit <laughs> pants on, that ain't my mortician. You know, I if he comes so. over in a jersey, I'd be like, "You're off the team." Yeah. Not my guy. Someone's <laughs> got to hold my grandma. He was funny. Yes, <laughs> he was funny yesterday because so he came up to somebody and introduced himself and himself, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, I've, I've heard you. You were on the podcast down in uh, Myrtle Beach." And he was like, "Wait, what?" He had no recollection, no recollection of being on the podcast. Yeah, he had no idea. It was hilarious. He was like, "Nah, that was like three years ago." I was like, "Bro, that was like two months ago." <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh, what he did was... we talk about? I was like, "You didn't say much." Good. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you that. So we got a special guest with us tonight that I'm I'm really excited about having you here. We've got Dave Hogan or uh, just Hogan or is it Cougar Falcon? The Cougar Falcon. Nice <laughs> or Cougar the Falcon. Cougar Falcon. So I thank you for being here, man. I'm uh, I'm excited not only to have you here, but excited that you started M4K here in Richmond, and uh, we've been part of it now for a few years, and it has been it's been a lot of fun, and it also makes me feel like I'm doing something good, which is great because 11 months of the year, you know, I don't do a whole lot of good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice that that November and into December. You know, you right guys before have really Santa jumped season. in full force. I mean, we have, man. It's uh, we like it. I think I mean, it's addictive. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, unfortunately, the listeners can't see you guys and see how ridiculous this room looks. <laughs> we look good. We do kind of look good, uh, right? I agree. I think four we solid look good. mustaches in here tonight, hanging tight. So trying to. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw it out there. Who's got the best mustache in the room as of today? Troy. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Troy, I can't win. Troy's cheating. Don't you agree? <laughs> I'm not cheating. Oh, yeah, but Troy's built for a mustache. Troy's honestly. built for a mustache. Um, yeah, he gets a mustache. Well, how long does that take you to grow, to come in thick like that? Like a couple well, weeks. But two weeks is Yeah, full two weeks thick. is, I have a beard in two weeks. So. Whereas I need to really get, I need the full month. I need every bit of it because the first two weeks is just kind of this wispy nonsense. And now I'm starting to hit my stride as we, we move forward. But it is a lot lighter this year than it has been in years past. And I guess I knew it was coming because no, you my, didn't. My beard's been so gray <laughs> for years. But I was talking a lot of shit week one. Pull it, pull it, Double J. He we should. have you screaming on this podcast. My mustache is strong. It will come in like my beard. It'll be dark. It's the be- It's the darkest thing on my face. It's well, it still is. That's a fact. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie. The coloring agents are are they add a lot of pop to yeah, your mustache. I've been trying to don't tell be them, ashamed. Yeah, don't be ashamed. I have some just for men. Light brown. That'll Yeah, autumn summer should be nice. <laughs> but I would tell you this, I have a few hints. Like if you leave it on too long, it will color your skin. Yeah. Oh, and the then actual you have dye. The dye colors your skin and it stays on for two or three days. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Well, yeah. I can't go doing that. No. Look, I play it I play it straight. By the rules. I'm a natural guy on That was a test, by the way. Oh, well, then I passed. <laughs> Good. Good, because I am not dying. It's not happening. Especially I, ever since I found out about the rash for three days or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> that sounds like a negative. I don't know yeah. that I want that. So, I'm doing it, though. I'm growing it in as is. We're ride, ride or die. It looks it. fine. It's, you have a good mustache. It's just light, so it doesn't pop off your face. You know what I did today that was devastating? And I'm sure this happens to a lot of growers out there. 
I was shaving, and I came over and I I took some off. Oh no! Uh, like the too top close, right too side. Much. And I looked in the mirror and was like, as soon as I washed off the shaving cream, I was like, oh my god, I lost. You know, it's just a couple centimeters, but yeah. now it looks off to me. It's all I can see. I almost rear-ended someone that was driving along, staring at my mustache, <laughs> like, <laughs> like this stupid thing. It's ruined. I had a shaving accident. Have you ever had, Hogan, have you had any shaving accidents over the years? I, I mean, think the mustache is an accident. Yeah. It's a shaving accident. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture you of, missed of a, spot. a handful of the growers yesterday. Which of those kids doesn't belong? <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Yeah, yours is light. Hard to pick up. Yeah, all these. All I have the to rest take some blame guys. on that, though. Because I have an uh, iPhone that's about, I guess, five iPhones <laughs> too old. It's a 6S, so it doesn't take the cool portrait mode pictures like all the new hey. kids have why are you zooming in dude it's disappointing because it's so not many the, it's not the iphone it doesn't matter if you zoom in or zoom out it appears that that mustache <laughs> is pulling down my left eye too that probably has nothing to do with booze intake at that point i don't know what that is it's an unfortunate photo when i saw the whole yeah. crew i was like oh wow Charlie's is perfectly filled in his entire upper lip is just perfectly filled in. Yeah, Look at that. That's what he does. It looks like a, like, I mean, if you were to draw it's on a, a Tonka toy. Yeah. He gets his hair to grow in the same direction. Yeah. It's all going the right way. Mine's unfortunate. <laughs> and then after all that, I decided to shave off a couple centimeters on the top right. But that'll grow in in time. I'm okay with this. I'm more concerned that Thanksgiving is going to look rough. Yeah, that's. The Thanksgiving pictures are always uh, a little rough with the mustache. So I mean, Troy, can, I'm giving up. Troy can probably speak to this, but I mean, I don't have a mustache year round. You don't have mustache. He's in the full beard year round for the most yeah. part. I'm not used to the food. Yeah, it gets pulling it out, getting oh, it all in there. Eating. I actually prefer it because because I'm a Guinness drinker. I love getting that extra a little in bit my later. Mustache. Yeah, yeah, I think it's mm. fantastic. Flavor saver. Yeah, we yeah. look best. in the early days. We would go out and we would do. We would always drink Guinness with the mustache. You got to. You got to. It's and standard. then on Stash Bash night, we would go out for burritos beforehand. <laughs> My burritos, just to get it in your mustache. Just, just just grind you got to go through and suffer for the rest of the Stash Bash. So was, at the beginning, this really was. This had a lot to do with the fun. Obviously, like right away, you recognize this is fun. This is and fun. Yeah. an opportunity to do to do a good thing. It really was the fun that was the motivator. That drew you to yeah. it. I mean, it was hilarious. I thought it was a great idea. And I wasn't a charitable. I wasn't doing charity. Yeah. You know? and so, but I saw these guys doing it, and I thought it was great. So so what were you thinking back in 2003? Yeah, when I it mean, came to? you know, I guess the, uh, like the, the guys that, that I, the first guys that I saw growing mustaches for charity, I, I thought it was just a, a, kind of a funny stick. Yeah. I whipped my wallet out, gave each of them 20 bucks. That's right. That's and I group. was like, that is really funny. And then the next year, we we looked around the Richmond area and found a group of growers and started a... How a, many growers were there that first year? You, you know remember? what? The first year was 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 more than the the preceding years because that first year, there were there was a lot of local interest, a lot of guys, a lot of old... I my, can see My that. college buddies that knew guys from Richmond and stuff. So, And they came in kind of strong. Like that first year, I think we raised 10 grand, first year. So right out of the gate, ten grand. That's, yep. I mean, that's so. It's funny because now we look back and go, "Wow, only ten grand." But oh, honestly, no. that's a hell of an but accomplishment. But no, that, it gets worse because then the next year, you know, that that group of guys, there yeah. were a lot of local guys that were staying in touch after college or whatever. So the next year, when we went to start it up again, nobody showed up. Oh, oh the no! One and it was it was a bunch of guys from my office and maybe <laughs> you know one other connection, and so. That's rough. Yeah, it was rough. I mean, we did like f- 600 bucks the following year. Oh, Damn. wow. You know, it was like an office pool. Talk really. about a letdown, huh? Yeah. So how long did it take before it like really kicked off again? Well, so after, but that that year, I think, was was the first year that I was like, 600 bucks is still. For for hanging out with your buddies, growing a mustache, yeah, rib, a ribbing on each other, It what's the, what's the harm, you know? Yeah. Right. So the next year, it was kind of like, let's just do it again and see what happens. And we had about 10 or 15 guys show up. Okay. And then we did like twenty five hundred bucks. So we know. started going back up. Okay. Yeah. I'm, did I'm you, in your that. wildest dreams, ever think it'd be where it is today? No. No way. It, it it blows my mind every time I think about it. It blows my mind. Me too. Me too. I mean, and so many of these guys are really just evil souls making fun of a nice mustache <laughs> like mine, and yet they do so much good. I, I don't understand. It's really conflicted about at least our group. 
Yeah. I'm so mad at these guys. <laughs> it's merciless. <laughs> it really is bad. But I think that speaks to the camaraderie that this this fosters. It's a fraternity. I don't know of a better way to describe it as far as the way the guys all start to get together and start hanging out. And then it gives you all something you have in common, which is really what a fraternity is, right? It's a yeah. bunch of guys or gals that... It's an easy icebreaker as soon as you walk in the door. You're in. Yeah. You're, yeah. yeah. Everybody's yeah. like accepts you immediately, and you've got... You've got every walk of life That's in right. this organization. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy because you know, like if if you're willing to grow a mustache for charity, you're all right. You're all right. I yeah. mean, you're kind yeah. of an okay guy, <laughs> and that's it. I think that's what everybody thinks. They're yeah. just like, all right, all right, you're, you're in. All right, in my yeah. book. I don't care how you vote. We're gonna hang out. We're yeah. hanging out. Yeah. It's 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 the one thing that I think makes it so hard for me to leave is that camaraderie that I feel every November. And so I, I, I say that when I try to get people to grow, I'm like, you don't understand. Like, you'll never not want to do this. Like, yeah. It's really interesting. Well, that's not true. In October, you'll be furious seeing it on the horizon. <laughs> you'll be like, oh, man, am I going to do this again? But then you start hearing the guys get excited, and then the new growers start to join the team, and then it's like all that energy builds up again. And then That new blood is fun. Like, yeah. once you get the new growers in, like, it just kind of – invigorates everything again yeah. And yeah you gotta have it because you can't just have the same people doing the same thing every year yeah but then you get some I of the think. new growers that are like blowing us out of the water on donations and i feel bad for not carrying my weight i'm like good god yeah but, but there's good. some pa- there's some heavy hitters and they look yeah. they just come from out of the blue sometimes i mean I, I i'm not a huge fundraiser i'm 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 terrible at raising funds Really, you're just not, but you you it's organize not my skill all this. Set. Yeah, I like the artistic element of it. I like the T-shirt yeah. design. I like the themes. I like the. Yeah, this year's theme, the T-shirt came out great. That's uh, that wasn't even me. That was Ben Kiefer, and it was all in in memory of an old one of the guy, early guys. Yeah, from back like you know back. So it was it was you know back to the ten and fifteen growers, and then one year I met a guy, Mike Durand, who's a great salesman, and so he sold it to all of his buddies. And the way I met him, he invited me to a christmas party and i went to his christmas party and i was the guy with the mustache <laughs> nice. and nobody knew what was up so they were like this guy looks kind of young and hip but man he's got that but he's weird <laughs> 70s porn stash and, yeah. and so i did so. the old trick that my buddies taught me which was go up to the food table and get some dip in your mustache and then go up and start a conversation <laughs> just leave the dip just in just your stash let and it roll yeah just rock it out pretend it's not there just see if anybody says anything to draw you. attention to your mustache and nice. so I, and so by the end of the night, finally, That's somebody good. said something about my mustache. And I said, oh, I'm doing it for charity. It's this thing. And all these guys just started laughing, carrying on. They're like, we knew something was up with your mustache. You know, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't have possibly been just that. Right. And I made 200 bucks at that party. That's awesome. That's the best. When they found out. So all those guys the following year grew. And then that was the year that we were like, we broke another. We were back to 10 grand. That's awesome. maybe maybe we hit 15 grand or something. Well, that was the year that we're like, we, we and those, those were the days where we didn't have online donations. Yeah. So we would take a box and people would give us their donations in envelopes and we would stick it in this box. And so we would, at the end of the season, oh, have really? a box. Oh, really? So of, literally you would just have your own box and like you'd keep it at your desk at work or something and just kind of carry it around with you or I wherever. Ke- I kept it in my secret space, you know, in my yeah. secret place. <laughs> yeah. But so when it got to that point, I was like, this is, we got to change this framework because if it wasn't me yeah somebody would just take the money somebody could easily just take take oh yeah. that's very true an unscrupulous <laughs> dip, dip, man so with a mustache an yeah. unscrupulous yeah. man with a mustache would just steal the money so i was like how do you lock this in and it was to go get a found a 501c3 so you had to go through all that work. is that a hard process like actually getting established as Not, a charity? No, because, I mean, they were like, well, you know, they want to get into your accounting and how you're going to handle your business and how yeah. much of a, how you're, and I was like, I, I just want to be established so that 100% of the donations go to a charity. So that's go to probably, our charities. so that's the easiest way then. You just turn around and go, actually, it's no, a, we don't want to cut. really 100% not. Yeah. 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 And yeah. So then they're like, oh, well, that's easy. The paperwork is simple. Yeah. Go for it. And I mean, our accountant was great at filing it. <laughs> Yeah, we got to have one of those. Greg Bailey. That's amazing. that's one of the things that I great service in Midlothian. I, <laughs> nice plug away. There you go. That's good. If you drop ITPH in the coupon code, he'll do your 2020 taxes for free. <laughs> that's good. He's gonna be like, what? The, what are these what people dropping <laughs> ITPH over here? What does that mean? So, I, I you touched on something that I think is really different about M4K, and it's something I harp on quite a bit on the show, 
is that really 100% of your in-kind donation does actually go to the charities. And that's not that's not necessarily something you hear of in this day and age. I agree. I know. That, I not, like, I really appreciate when people get to the point when they learn about our organization that that's the root of it. Yeah, I mean, that's, it blows my mind. It wouldn't, other, in my mind, it wouldn't work otherwise. I mean, well, I... You know, the fact yeah, that so we get some corporate sponsors and that kind of goes to helping get like pint glasses and fun things like the things that that make the growers the feel swag. special. Yeah. But every dollar that you donate as a listener or somebody donating to us, <laughs> it literally all goes to the charities. And that is I think that's amazing. Well, one, all of it goes to the charity and two, which is great. The local charity aspect of it is because, you know, you have some of these huge charities out there nationwide. You donate. You don't know exactly where the funds are going to. Yeah. You don't have a trail yeah. to say, "Hey, I actually, that's working." You know. Yeah. And it's uh, you can say, "Hey, I can see an effect because it's in my local area." It's not like uh, I got to pay for the CEO. Like my contribution just went to the CEO's salary. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's got a Porsche. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that <laughs> that that was an issue early on too to figure out which the organizations right to give your money to. And and we teamed up with some early on that we decided. Our money wasn't being used right. Okay, I mean because well, their, their funds so. were not in balance, like exactly what you're saying. So then, it, that was too big for one guy to do. Gotcha. And so, and also when you f- found a 501c3, I have to plug my partner too in this whole, my the co-director, Aaron Breed. Okay. Who okay. is the co-founder also of the organization? Nice. And I don't want to leave him in the dust. Nah. Because <laughs> I was I was <laughs> running with this story, but he grew from the first year on and never quit. And also, he's like a smart guy, so I, I help. I get him to help me do some numbers and such. Well, you got to have somebody to do that. You know, looking I, out for. Yeah, you don't want me to be I'm your numbers. More the guy. salesman, and yeah. he's more like the you know. Processor. But you guys do try to rotate, somewhat, charities locally. Yeah. Yes. Whoever. Yeah. I mean, about. we have lo- long-term partnerships with, with some of our, key charities like right. Ask, Scan, Children's Hospital, Feed More, Cameron Gallagher, and. Every year, what we're trying to do is find organizations that would want to engage with us, mm-hmm. that would help us give us a little promotion, you know. Yeah, because you want them to at least say, hey, there's a good organization out there you can donate to, and we'll get the money. And it's like really just a channel for us to count the money yeah. and give it to them. It gives them a different way to go out there and, and market themselves, though, because if they're always saying, hey, help us, help us. Yeah. But then you can say, hey, there's this really funny organization that's doing a really good thing, and the money comes to us. And then people think, yeah, okay, I'll donate to that. And it kind of feels like you're donating something different because you really are. Yeah. I mean, you're donating to M4K, yeah. which is still the strangest organization I've ever seen that works <laughs> yeah. like a champ. I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing. I've never seen anything like it. It's I love a- explaining to people what we're doing, and then everyone's like, cool, cool, cool. And I go, yeah, last year we raised $308,000, and then their heads explode. They're like, oh, that's for real. Like. This isn't a twenty dollar operation it's, like you're talking about. We're real about. philanthropers in the Richmond yeah. area. I mean, like, yeah, but when you really think about it, the amazing, like, to his point, that's that's huge money, and yet, in relative terms, less than a hundred and fifty guys. Oh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, it's been around, and the numbers have the financial numbers have just gotten sequentially bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. bigger. But the growth of growers has it. it doesn't pace the same, yeah. but those guys are just getting more and more, and it's, you know, that's credit to you guys, credit to everybody that's growing. Well, you guys are doing it year doing after boom. year, and what happens is people realize this is they're doing this every year. It's a fun, and once they learn about our organization, yeah, then they they understand that it is a great channel to donate to charity. You get more bang for your buck. You get a little show. Yeah. I was a you taker. Get dinner and a show. I was a taker for years. I would just give the money. Yeah. To throw money well, at those the guys problem. are important. Those guys yeah. are important. You and, need the and givers. And I still, I still to this day give. So it's really become counterintuitive. Now I do all the work and I pay. It's a yeah. really good deal. <laughs> yeah. But but it's because I don't want to like hold hold that I'm involved against the guys that got me involved. So I still make sure to to pay them out because oh, I yeah. think it's oh, important. Yeah. But I think a turning point for me, one of the one of the growers, Keo, you, yep. you know Keo. He's He's a great guy, and he always did this every year, and he always brought me in, and he would say, hey, man, you want to donate so you can go to Stash Bash? And I was like, that makes a lot of sense to me. He knew the nerve to hit with me. Uh-huh. Like, you know, <laughs> Wait, did you like, say drinks? <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like, hold on. I'm not I missing do, that party. I can do a good thing, and I can go to that Stash Bash. And so I went to like three, four Stash Bashes 
before ever growing, but I never missed it because it was my favorite. Did party. you go to one at the old um, marquee or whatever? The that old, old theater that yes. was down on. Bro- yeah, I went there with the terrible band. Yes, <laughs> that was my band. Yes, well, I didn't that was see. The, that you was set the, me up. The, the, <laughs> that, was, that was the on air band. That band was fantastic. The mustache. I was. I mean, the mustache house band. Yes, I was yeah, very I was, upset that that band uh, didn't make it bigger. I'm a fan of their entire collection. Yes. I, didn't, I didn't know that was you. <laughs> Back me into a corner, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> First one. I w- so then Brendan took me to a couple with Keo, and but I I didn't go to those. It was more recently, and uh, I was just like, yeah, I gotta get in on this. This is we're we're missing out. Well, I remember the turning point for me with with Keo was that one year, you know, he was battling cancer, and he yeah, actually yeah. was was fighting against that and putting up the good fight. And then all of a sudden, November comes around. And without missing a beat, this selfless dude then started putting himself out there to raise money for people that he deemed less fortunate than him. And when I saw that happen, that ruined it for me. I was like, that's it. I was like, like, this guy is amazing with his with his wispy mustache you know because he can't grow hair it's not strong and it's no, okay. it's, strong now, it's stronger now than it was that year yeah do you and remember I, what i said that year to you <laughs> i was there with you and i was like yeah but you didn't know i didn't i didn't sick. know he was right, sick right. and i'm like he goes mustache is really weak and brendan turns me he's like dude you asshole you <laughs> yeah. like you're a real jerk and he's like what are like, you talking about i don't know anything i was like oh let me tell you in. <laughs> but when i saw that I was like, this man cares so much that even when he could turn around and say, hey, I need help. Yeah. He's like, I want to help. That was it. I was like, the, the DNA of this organization is legit. Is, is, it was built into him. And I saw that. And I said, never again. Yeah. I will not be a taker. I will grow. I want to do this. And why I've been not? Ex- I mean, why would you not? That's the thing. Once you, I, My I'm excuse with you. was always it. work. Yeah. It was always work because since I'm in I sales, always would say to people that say that, like, do you think that this is my day job? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, I go to meetings too and meet with clients and yeah. do sales. You know, but you just get you just grow to own it. Everybody yeah. knows. So you, everybody that I know knows me as yeah. the mustache grower guy. Yeah, you got to own it. Yeah, and you've been doing this longer than all of us here. What are the uh, you still getting the looks occasionally? Like, look at that stash. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like, like a sh- soccer practice this yeah. weekend. <laughs> I got a ton of attention. Like everybody's like, "What's up, Magnum?" The all the old jokes. You know, every you know them all after yep. sixteen. What's funny years is or seeing the same guys. I, a lot of the guys I see around town outside of the mustache, and I'm like, he looks familiar, but I can't really place a face. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm used to seeing you Bad every year with a mustache. Dude, I'm standing in an elevator this weekend going up to a rooftop bar. I'm standing in the elevator. This dude standing next to me. There's no one else in the elevator. Turns to me, and he says, mustaches for kids? Full beard. And I'm thinking, what a bold-ass thing to say with the man with the mustache because – what could if I'm been, not? Could have been yeah, a live yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, like, what if I'm just a mustache guy? That is, that is an issue. It was a bold question. Yeah, he should have been like, what are you talking but about? But how did dude? he know mustaches for kids? That's good. It turns oh. out that he had been involved and helped with some of the merchandise in years past. So he's familiar with the organization and donates. and like. See, that's so, so he dumb. was like, he was like, hey. And immediately when I said yes, like, boom, fast friends. Like, hung yeah. out with yeah. the dude, you know, half the night. And he goes like, you're all right. But I thought... That's a bold thing that's to say it. to that's somebody. That's like asking a lady if she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like he well, was I constipated didn't... or So is that pregnant? stupid thing on your face have anything to do with the kids? Uh, no. <laughs> this is my look. <laughs> Thank you. you so, <laughs> so look, we, used to, we would try to make rules for when you encounter a live one. That's a guy with a, a real, real mustache. mustache. Okay. Oh. And, you, <laughs> and, you, and you mistakenly think that they're growers. You yeah. Know? So how do you play that off? You know? Uh, what's... Do we got nothing. Inside? Yeah, we've never come yeah. up with anything. <laughs> we've always fallen short. So I was sitting at a bar the other day, and there no, was a really good on you. Yeah, this keeps adding up, huh? <laughs> and this guy, this guy was sitting there talking to this girl, and he's like, he had this little soul patch, full mustache, and long hair, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm thinking about cutting the hair. You know, I, I guess I'm just getting to that age." He's like, "But I think I'm going to keep the mustache." And like, he was a real live one, like out in the wild, like going through the mental decision. And I turned to him and was like, I think they look cool. <laughs> like, I grabbed my beer and walked off. And I was like, I don't know if I just ruined it for him forever yeah. or if I just solidified it. He was like, yeah, that dude's all right. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's he was funny. Really cool. It's, it's cool. funny you say that about the elevator situation. So this morning, first time, new job, brokerage, 
changing, you know, changing brokerages. Everybody's introducing themselves, and then all of a sudden, two guys are standing in the corner, and um, I'm introducing myself. The guy in the corner, he wasn't part of the, He's not part of the brokerage. He's just all of a sudden appeared in the door with this other dude, and he's standing there. And I say, hey, I'm Stuart, so-and-so, introducing myself to everybody. And just so you know, this is not my normal deal. This is a charity mustache. The guy in the corner who I didn't recognize says, M4K? Nice. And I was like, yeah. He's the uh, owner of Homesmith yeah. Construction. Nice. Nice. Construction, like, like the home builder, Homesmith, is like, and I'm not going to mention his name just because I'm just saying. Fair enough. He was there, and he's like, he didn't he's, a, he's a huge donor. He's made oh, it. He's nice. donated a ton. Yeah. Yeah. So Great I, was, guy. He, and he, I, I met, never met him, but his first thought was, there's a mustache, and he just said M4K. I was like, damn, this thing's got some serious traction. <laughs> it's I amazing. Agree. It's good I stuff. Know. I'm very so what, proud. This week, I closed a $1.3 million deal with a mustache. Boom. So to all the people who say. It can't be done. It can't yeah. be done. It can be done. With I, style and flair. Yeah. And, and, and I went in there, and I didn't <laughs> realize. I was, wearing a, uh, I was wearing a sport coat, and I put on my glasses, and I caught a glimpse of myself. And I looked. Were they Oakley? Just like, no, they're just dork glasses. <laughs> I looked like Ned Flanders or some dude on NPR, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I always thought at least I had like the hip, like kind of like shady-looking mustache. Yeah. Now, I got the dorky, like talking <laughs> physics with you in the middle of the night nice. kind of mustache. Well, to I my was, surprise, the, the room was filled, you know, it was 35 people this morning. There's seven dudes. The rest of them are ladies. And to my surprise, when I was apologetic for my mustache, they liked it. three to five ladies were like, oh, it looked fine. We didn't think that was anything. I was like, well, maybe the mustache can be rocked. Well, we've had disputes about this, whether or not they like it or not, because most women will tell you they don't like our mustache. Yeah. They, they say, yeah. oh, it's so gross. And They're liars. But, but we kept track yeah. for years. You know, we've been running this organization for, what, 17 years? You got years a spreadsheet? Now, 15, yeah. 16, 17 years. <laughs> so we, we kept stats on our romantic encounters okay oh, wow I like and, this. And, and unbelievably we it was pretty much unanimous you have more sexual encounters with the mustache than all other months okay. in the year so strange story last year the day after the stash bash i did not get rid of my mustache yet because i'd grown fond of my mustache so everyone else is going out and shaving not me i kept my mustache for the rest of the weekend and i went on a wine tour and the first thing I did, all hungover, because Stash Bash is oh, not child's play. I remember yeah. this. You talked about driving up there and not being so. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hammered. <laughs> and we get to the spot where we're doing wine tours, and we get on one of those buses. And I brought a sandwich on the bus because I was starving. And the first bite I took, mayonnaise just glopped out the ass end of it and all down my shirt. So, and mayonnaise stains are the absolute. It's oil. Yeah, out. it's oil. So we get to the first winery, and I'm just devastated because I'm. This mustached guy in a, mu- in a mayonnaise yeah. stained shirt. And so we're waiting to get into the tasting room because our tasting isn't for another like half hour. So I go in the tasting room and there are these these four girls, I would say all in their late 20s, all sitting at the at the bar getting drinks. And I walked over and I was like to the guy, I said, hey, do you have any wine away? Because I figured that might work. And they all yeah. sell wine away in those places. Yeah. So I was like, do you have any wine away? And. The girls are like, what do you need wine away for? And I was like, oh, I got mayonnaise all over my shirt. And this cock block of a wine pourer is like, probably not mayonnaise. And I'm like, he's, I know he's <laughs> yeah. looking at my mustache and, <laughs> and judging how yeah. I got white stains on my shirt. But I'm like, bro, if you could just get the wine away. Yeah. But so I start, you know, like joking around like, no, it really is mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Like, why would I why would I make up that this yeah. guy? And I had totally forgotten because you forget after a while you have a mustache. So I'm yeah. just engaging in no, conversation yeah. with these these 20 year olds and one of the girls you can tell like her tune is like i can't say anything remotely funny without her almost falling off the chair and i'm like oh i'm 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 knocking it out of the park it's, here like this is crazy so easy it's yeah. only two things it's either you or the wine or well, the it's, mustache it's definitely yeah it's three things it's three things <laughs> it's, it's the wine the mustache and then me <laughs> in that order it's a bundle it's a bundle <laughs> but so I end up chatting them up, and then when we go into the wine tasting, those girls are coming out. They're like, hi, Brendan. How are you? And, like, all the other girls in our group are like, to my wife, like, do you care? And she's like, no, he's coming home with me. I'm not worried about it. We get to the next winery. These girls are there again. And they're like, Brendan, yeah, what's up? And I'm like, oh, now we're high-fiving. Like, we're getting to that stage of our relationship. We go through that place. Then we get to the third winery, 
And that's where things really hit the fan, typically, about the third yeah. winery. Not good. And after the tasting, we're all chilling in this one room. The smoke show girl is like, you want to lose these people and come with us? We're going out to a bar. We're going to get loose. And Did I'm you like, and your mustache go? No, absolutely not. My wife was in the other <laughs> room. Like, yeah. like, but the I wife was, like, was part of the other group. Because this yeah. story could have had a drastically different ending then. But yeah. in my mind, I was like, how is this possible it's the mustache. that these 20-something-year-old girls, I'm known as the mayonnaise guy with the mustache, and they're like, we should take this old guy out with us because he's a ton of fun. You know what, like, though? He you're, gets it. To, to it hope, was the weirdest to thing. Because it's point. magical, dude. It really cause was. Because when you're, you're totally serving like a higher cause and it gives you good I was, And I was confident in my mustache. Like, yeah. I'd forgotten I had the yeah. damn thing. Yeah. It wasn't until I was talking about the story the other day that I was like, oh, shit, that's right. That was the I'm day after dude. Stash Bash. And we went out that night. I did my next thing. I went to the pencil thin because I just oh, I trimmed yeah. it out and then went out for the next two days with a pencil thin. Oh, my gosh. That's a good look. The pencil thin, that's strong. It Especially, makes you look smart. I've got the very light hair, so you don't know that I'm rocking a pencil thin until you come up on me. And, and you're like, yeah. oh. Ooh. He yeah. drives a fancy car. Like, look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably exactly. British racing. Green. He's got a Miata. <laughs> but he, he, I bet you it's a Miata. <laughs> uh, that says, it, does, it either says Jaguar or Miata. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. give you that. I've Did you get the out. mayonnaise out? Oh, yeah. The wine away actually ended up working nice. pretty you know, well. You know what else gets mayonnaise out of clothes? Red S- wine. <laughs> 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 well, I'll try that next try time. Try that next time. <laughs> <laughs> so I covered the whole shirt in mayonnaise <laughs> just to get it all one stain. <laughs> yeah, ir- ironically, you know what gets red wine out of something? White wine. Is that a fact? Or that is a still... fact. And you know how I know this? Okay, I'm right. I was at a wedding, my, one of my high school friend's wedding, and my wife went to hug the bride with red wine. Oh, and no. Right down the bride, back of the bride's dress. And there was a lady walking by, and she goes, you know what gets that out? White wine. And so they just dumped white wine on it, wiped it off, and I kid you not, it looked like it was like that miracle cleaner. No way. Yes. Just Damn. And then you smell like and then you got a wet yeah. and you got a wet bride. I mean, you know, she was gonna get there anyway. You got to consummate that wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's done. No, but I think to his point, uh, it's a lack or a lack of options. If everybody, if when it comes to the mustache and the guys and getting hit on by ladies and things like that, if everybody's pretty much in there looking the same, and all of a sudden you got. Yeah, handsome Troy walking That's up right. with his mustache. Yeah. Well, it looks like, like the Lego guy mustache. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's you perfect. Know, there's a little. There bit is of something it. to be said for that, though, being the different. Because yeah. which one is not like the others? There's a which certain number is... of people who do seek out something a little different. Oh, 15 years ago, 17 years ago, whenever it was, I grew my beard. I was one of the only people around that had beards. Now I'm like, well, you were 12 Trends and growing so, a beard. Yeah. <laughs> but now everybody has beards. Yeah. They mean, really it's, do. It's crazy. I can't wait for my beard. Not that yeah. I'm wishing away any of this. This is great, <laughs> but I can't wait. Do you mind. usually wear a beard? Only in the winter. And so yeah. this really cuts in because I've always done a Thanksgiving to St. Patrick's Day. That's like my beard time. Yeah. And now I, I can't do that. Lose a month. I do. I'd lose some time there. So now I get to uh, I get to rock this mustache on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm jealous of these two guys because I can't do the beard. I have missing spots. Oh, I mean, yeah. this is this is I shaved last Tuesday. So we're on. No, no, a little bit more. We're 10 days, but I can't get the beard in. Well, I can do the 5 o'clock shadow, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt that much. That means you're not that, you're not a hairy, you're not that hairy. Hairy chest? <clears throat> yeah. Hairy back? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Are we going down this path? <laughs> yeah. I mean, just trying to figure out the mustache dynamic. This is not going to help the No, no I think it'll this be- year I'm going to not knock my mustache down. I'm just going to let the beard come in and just have a Get, thick mustache. Have with more thick, full mustache, yeah. Yeah, because maybe it's not a bad idea. One of the guys on our team that's growing yesterday, he's got he's full stash, but he hadn't shaved his beard part in like three days or so. Yeah, he looked like a normal. Didn't yeah. Didn't phase. It was like okay. You know who kinda... we used to interact with the um, Richmond Mustache and Beard League. Oh yeah, those yeah. dudes I mean, have some awesome. Well, so beards. look, I, I'll tell you the truth. Like we started, we were we were doing these uh, our mustache meetings at Mekong. Yeah. Yeah. Right. At one point in the game. And so we would go to Mekong and on would just we would show up once we were in mustache and we meeting on Wednesdays. He's like, oh, you guys are you guys are in the back room. He'd take us in the back room. And there was a keg back there. 
They would keep kegs flowing. Strong. But it was the beer league guys. Uh, and so we were coming in and we'd host our whole meeting house there. beer. And there's all these guys with these real big curly mustaches and stuff. And so it was kind of like, wait, what? And they're looking at us <laughs> like, you guys are growing. You guys got some. Bunch we- of. Yeah. <laughs> bunch, of bunch of posers. Who want to be tryhards over there. But the. <laughs> But theirs were, you know, they had yeah. these costume, you know, curlies and long yeah, wax. Cause, cause they do it up. I mean, they have the whole. So I don't know if we were just drinking their beer and hanging out and having our meeting there at the same time. But do I, you think that they they are upset by you though because you're a one month mustache and they're a year round? I'm mustache? pretty sure there's a little bit of yeah, a little they, animosity. They, think, they know that we're like kind of joking. We're not, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, a, I it's our costume that. for the month and and it's their life. those people. That grow the mustache and the beard, the beard league people. That's like their being. Like that's, yeah, their, that's identity. their identity. Like it's one hundred percent. Like they can't get enough of it's it. It's Currently, my identity too, Troy. That's yeah. how I feel too. I'm. Right. I'm. We've joined them for this month. They should at least like us for that. Yeah, we're with them. We for this month. Them. We respect them. Yeah, we're all them. one in this, and we'll all just drink the, the, this keg of beer. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Speaking of, I might drink some more of that keg of beer we got right here. It's about that time. I gotta is say, pa- this pallet house is really, really cool. It's this is fun really here. cool. It's uh, it's difficult to not drink when you have this. So that's that's one. I guess that's a good and a bad. Yeah, it's uh, just conducive to a lot of a lot of bad decisions. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna go bad decisions. Bad decisions <laughs> good decisions. Maybe. You know, we make good decisions. I remember last year, like one in the morning, we decided to take our kids sledding the next day at yeah, Wintergreen. That was they good. loved that. That was a good fatherly decision that would have never happened had we not had twelve beers. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> and then we decided, no, we should do we should do something with the kids. Yeah. So what do you guys do? This is going to be released on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, Happy so Thanksgiving. What's, everybody. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. So what's any plans? What's everybody doing? What's your uh, what's your go to food meal for Thanksgiving? Oh, I mean, I don't get green bean casserole rest of the year, so I love. Green bean. green bean casserole, but we, we cream we of host. chicken, cream cream of chicken soup. Yeah, that stuff's awesome. The What's your topic? Crunchy so onions. Oh yeah, crunchy you gotta onions. have the crunchy onions. Yes. Yeah, that that makes it there for it's sure. A done deal. But the thing that we've been doing here the last few years that's a big hit is we we host Thanksgiving here, and we do a wine tasting. So everybody who comes, yeah, out here, right? Yeah, brings like their favorite bottle of wine from the past year. So they're like, I discovered this this year, and so then you end up with like eight or nine bottles of wine you know, across the bar and everybody sits around and tastes all the wine. And we do that at one o'clock. And then, you know, you go back inside around two o'clock and now everybody's laughing and chatting and cooking food. And like, it makes for a much better Thanksgiving. I'll say that's the way to do it. It's it's nice. And now it's getting to the point. uh, You host, you're a big host. You're, you're hospitable. I I like to be, which is funny because I got a true yin and yang marriage. (laughs) My wife, (laughs) my wife fills that other side of that uh, yin and yang. She's like, I don't want to host this. I don't want to. Does do the wine too. tasting yeah. help ease through the? Oh, she day? loves hosting Thanksgiving. Like she has her, yeah. her things, but like if it was up to me, I'd host a party. Whatever she you know, made yesterday was awesome. You know? That pumpkin roll. Pumpkin roll. roll? Ooh, that man. was fantastic. That was pretty good. That was good. The so cream is it, cheese roll in the middle? Yeah, like a big yeah, brownie, yeah. and they oh, roll yeah. up. That's the yeah, one. That's the one. So good. So is um is it more than just your immediate family? You're getting it bigger and bigger. Uh, it's mostly immediate family, and then. Eight I bottles of wine for like seven people. Well, they get they get twelve of us. <laughs> they Not like they like to drink their wine. <laughs> Good, we do, and it doesn't family. all get drank right away. Yeah, you know, you're doing a tasting. It's classy. Exactly. Yeah. You put some mayonnaise on your shirt. You pour some wine. You know? <laughs> it's a classy. Everybody has a great time. It's a, it's a classy gonna, affair. Troy, you're gonna take people down to your uh, new lake house. Uh, we're gonna go down Friday, just the family for the night. Stay one night, just check on it. Um, we're staying in town. My in-law. We're going over to my in-laws. Yeah. Um, I would just be hanging out during the day, and I I don't have to do much. Usually, I fry a turkey or two, but nobody asked me to do it this year, so I ain't mad at it. Yeah, fried turkeys are the way to go. Forty five minutes done. It's so much better than a baked turkey, too. Yeah, it I really got, is. My na- I got neighbors, and they they're like, "We got the grease. It's hot. We're doing it. If you want to fry your turkey, show up." And it's a well, and they drink <laughs> Bloody Marys and do fried turkeys. It's on so funny how morning. I mean, fried turkeys have always kind of been a thing. I'm from Baton Rouge, really. Originally, but uh, fried turkeys are always a good stuff. But you know, Thanksgiving is rolling around because as soon as Halloween ended, I walk into Walmart and there are four pallets of peanut oil. 
sitting right at the entrance, which just yeah. says, okay, everybody's like, going to start frying things. Peanut oil over veg- vegetable oil any day. you got to have peanut. you got to do oh, peanut. Yeah. The oil costs more than a turkey. I know. Yeah. I know. It's like $10 a gallon. You need like three gallons of it, and then the turkey's like So I'll bucks. give you a little. Uh, it is 10. Peanut oil is 10 bucks a gallon. Yeah. If right? you're going yeah. to do any frying this uh, Thanksgiving, I'll give you a little tasty treat you should try. Get a whole mushroom, inject it with Tabasco, bread it, and drop it in the fryer. Fucking Cajuns. I, I like it. it. Sounds good. So good. You ever had a turd? <laughs> yeah. Turdu- a turducken? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no, a turd? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped by the Bonaire turd. Butcher. You know the Bonaire Butcher? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's out, he does his ribs. He's smoking his ribs out on his, in his smokehouse or whatever. So I assume this turd is not going to be what I'm thinking. No, 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 good, no. Good, thank God. But this turd may change like your life. Thanksgiving. Oh, I've had Uh-oh. like three of those in my life. So he, smoke, he smokes his ribs in the smokehouse, right? Okay. And, he, and then he sets these. He'll take a jalapeno. Slice it open and stuff it with his um, smoked sausage dip. Ooh. And then wrap that with bacon and then smoke it in there with his ribs. So it's a jalapeno stuffed with cream cheese really? and so- smoked sausage wrapped in bacon. You need Smokes more of that, Sounds good. And, the, and uh, th- there's some interaction with the uh, rib drippings, I think. The rendering? I the believe rendering. That, that rendering or whatever. And so, oh, they're amazing. So I'm pretty excited about this deli we're about to do here. Oh, it's we're about cracking that into time. One. So... I was in Asheville this past week. Now, everybody who lives here in Richmond, they all know the story behind the gingerbread stout and why it's such a such a big deal here. And everybody everybody goes absolutely nuts over this stuff. And when the gingerbread stout comes out, everybody in Richmond's chatting and talking and getting excited. It's oh, part of Christmas. It really is. And everyone's like, oh, are you going to the gingerbread release party? And it's a big deal. And the lines are out the door, right, to get to get the gingerbread stout. Well... I go down to Asheville this past week, and I get there, and I, the first person I run into is, is young Jimmy. The listeners know young Jimmy. I'm talking to young Jimmy, and he's like, oh, my God, the ninja bread is out. And I'm like, It's called Ninja Bread Man. Holly Porter brewed with spices and love. Hippies. Asheville Brewing Company. Hippies. 5.6%, 26 IBUs. So the first night... The Ninja Bread Man, everyone's talking about it. And I'm like, it's interesting. This, The commotion sounds a lot like the gingerbread commotion. Then the next day, I'm talking to a client, and he's like, oh, yeah, the Ninja Bread's out. And I'm like, what is happening here? Then I get to another bar. I get to Wicked Weed, and I'm out there, and I meet a guy over by the fire because mustaches are nice people. Start talking to people. And he's like, yeah, we just came from Asheville Brewing Company. They have the Ninja Bread Man out. It's amazing. And I was like, that's it. I've got to try this stuff. I've got to know what the Ninja Bread Man's all about. Damn. So I went, I found the brewery, I picked it up because I've got to know, do we do it better or do they do it better? And one thing I've noticed right out the box, and I haven't, I'm not drinking them yet, is the ABV is far lower on the Ninja Bread Man. It's like about 6% versus like 9% on a gingerbread stout. Now my only comp- gingerbread is nine point two six. Ninja bread man is five point six. Yeah. Jeez, there you go. So there's a big difference between those as far as booziness goes. Like and 50%. I fifty percent. I tend to find that if I drink a whole pint of gingerbread stout, I'm a little hammered. Yeah, for that. So and I'm it ex- always to me always had a little bit of a boozy taste. You could taste the alcohol in it. Yeah, even with all the spices and stuff. Ooh, I started with the gingerbread stout. That's a so damn that good is, beer. Are we all doing gingerbread to start with? You can do whatever you want. I jumped on the Ninja first by I just accident. Want, I want to get everybody's take on this. Just an Prefer honest to back God. And forth. Who's doing their their dark holiday beer better? better. Asheville or Richmond? Yeah, because it's a, all those things come into account. Is it better high alcohol? Is it better mid alcohol? Yeah. It, is it better flavor? Too much sugar, more sugar? They're all doing the ginger sugar. and the spices. I mean, they've got the same <clears throat> concept here between the two beers. My initial was the Ninja because that thing tasted buttery. Dude. It was buttery. All right, now I got to try it because now you got me thinking. I don't know if it's my sinuses are all jacked up. I've had the gingerbread. I'm not tasting a lot, so maybe it's my sinuses. It doesn't seem as flavorful as it has been in the past. I don't know. If that's just me or y'all. I think it's still somebody. delicious. I think it it's still got its deliciousness. I mean, if this was the first beer, I drink a couple of beers, you know, pre pre show, but yeah, that's a standard procedure. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to show up and go dry. 
<laughs> and I tell you, if you drink them too close uh, to each mm. other, it's actually kind of yeah. difficult to to really glean a lot of the differences I'll because look. the gingerbread stout tends to be, it's got a lot of flavors that are just really punchy in the mouth, whereas the ninja bread is, seems like a little more low key. Yeah. So yeah, it's I was just saying, I can definitely tell it. There's an upfront like punch in the face with gingerbread with Hardywood versus the ninja. I would I would spend some time with the two of them, allow them to mill around in your mouth because. I this agree. Is serious I think shit. it's two totally different beers. The alcohol content's breaking it down. Uh, a the gingerbread, difference. the gingerbread gives you a gingerbread essence through your nose after you drink that booze. That's what makes it give you that Christmas cheer. Yeah, it really yeah. does, though. No, you're right, though. The booziness is almost it's part of the flavor. Now it's endearing I'm, to the flavor. Yeah, now that I'm I'm drinking it side but by side. But that ninja was really buttery and kind of. <laughs> Reese's Pieces It's, it's delicious uh, It's pretty fucking tasty That's why as soon as I tried it After hearing the commotion And realizing It's the same The same people With that local pride Talking about their Their prized holiday beer I was like It is But they're two different I animals I it. think they're two different animals One's a stout One's a porter For starters And there is a There's a difference right there That I think comes through But the flavoring The things that they've added Are so similar That it's it's a, it's a wild take on it. They're two winners, that's for sure. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But there's we're about no losers to... in this game. Oh, there's going to be I'm a loser. I'm disappointed because <laughs> so there has to be. There has to be a loser. <laughs> I'm disappointed because my sniffer's broken, and I can't oh, taste this is anything terrible. right this now. This is heartbreaking. Do you think anything. it's the mustache draws more germs? or it, it I thought could. it was a filter to help it with could germs. could be. That was the point. My head has been stopped up all day, and I well, you, I that's... can't. If you mix these up, I couldn't even tell you the difference in the well, taste. That's the truth. If your sinuses are messed up, like you tell yeah. your kids, if you don't like something, pinch your nose and eat it because you're not going to be able to taste it. If you you can't smell, you're not the tastes are going to be all off. But I like the uh, ah poor Troy, that's the worst. The guy's got beer tasting, yeah, with no not taste gonna, buds. Not going to get it. Yeah, this is this is piss poor. Hmm. You should just drink bad. You should just drink Pat's Blue Ribbon. <laughs> you really should. Tonight's your PBR night. I'm wasting. I'm wasting this good beer. We'll just give you some hams. You'll never know the difference. I'll give Ashfield. I'll give Ashfield Brewing the. Uh, Kudos for the like sneaky ninja mask on the bottle. Oh, it's still up for the bottle. I bought three koozies immediately and a hat. But I was also a little drunk at the time. (laughs) Hey, how was Asheville? It was Hippieville back in college. When I was back in my day, it was Hippieville. There were drum circles in downtown all the time. Yeah, it hasn't changed. It's very much. I mean, it's the only place I know where you live drum circles. No, no, I know. There's just more beer there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, They have like 70 (laughs) breweries now. I mean, it's, it's insane the amount of beer they have there. But it's, I love that hippie culture there too. It's how inter- it is so far out. Must it's, the people be with seventy? Like everybody's got their favorite. Everybody's going to tell you about it. Many people as there were to all be singling on the ninja bread man because that is the thing. Yeah, everybody, these everybody know argues. Beer. They yeah. fight between. Oh, I like that is this, a beer like drinking this. community. So they know. and they're all they like do. the ninja mm-hmm. bread, the ninja bread. And I was like, oh, hold on, they're okay. united about something. I've never seen them united. Yeah. They're yeah. as peaceful as these hippies are. <laughs> they don't like, they, they, don't share, they don't agree on much. Yeah. yeah, they even, they get really pissed off whenever a brewery sells out. That's like, how oh, dare they, they? Oh, when Wicked Weed sold out, they were furious. They were like, I can't like believe. little it. passive riots. So do you yes. think you could walk <laughs> into, walk down to Asheville <laughs> and blow their, take a couple cases of the Hardywood gingerbread I've been and bringing blow their it minds? To, I've been bringing it to a client every year. And they like it. They love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, look, it's a great beer. Yeah. But the, the alcohol is, content, when like once you get up to s- s- beyond seven, seven and stuff, it's a new, it's a new engagement. It's like brandy yeah. or Tom. I mean, you're drinking a, and this has a real brandy vibe to it. The gingerbread yeah. stout. Yeah. yeah. You get that. It's got that. It's like uh, it's a little thicker, and it's definitely more pungent with booze. So. Since Troy's get, lost his sniffer, should well, we Troy, let him go first? Yeah, why don't you give us what you've got? <laughs> they taste great from what I can taste. <laughs> I can't distinguish between the two of them, though. Like, And I know they sh- I should be able to. They are such different beers. Yeah. I'm, I'm devastated that you can't, you can't taste this. Because there's, there's not going to be a lot of more Ninja Bread Man floating around. This is hard to get. Even That's for people me. in Asheville. That's on me. Ninja Bread Man. It's such a, a good great name. name. Oh, it's such yeah. a good name. Yeah. So All you right. got a the fact that they're. Go- <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Uh-oh. Excuse me. You got a hat with the ninja bread guy on it. I got the world's worst like farmer hat out of there. It's got uh-huh. a big sun on it. Total hippie crap. Own right? it. Dude. Yeah, I Own love it because it. it'll settle into your. I head saw eventually. my mustache and I was like, I am gonna put that hat on. 
Like so I was in the brewery. I was like, that's that that hat screams mustache. Is that the hat? No, no. I'll, but that sun is on it. I'll have to oh, show it to you. Okay. Nice. So, all right. So, Troy, you're just going to have to just say they're exactly the same. That's what you're yes. going with? Yes. And that leads you to what? Right down the middle. Two and a half. Yeah. Both two sides. All right. So, one to five, you're getting it at two and a half. No, I give it higher than that because I can. Because you know they're good. Well, I can still taste that they're good. I just can't. Suss out all the different flavors in each one. Are you a big gingerbread fan? I do like the gingerbread. I don't yeah. like a lot of the iterations. Christmas morning. Yeah. Uh, the Caliente they do is the best one. I yeah, think. the so, hot one, the spicy yeah, one. It's really mm-hmm. good. All right, well, Stu, we'll go to you. What do you uh Right off the bat, I'm leaning towards Hardywood. Leaning the, towards Hardywood. What? Yeah. Okay. I just think there's a full flavor that's coming on the back end for the gingerbread stout versus the ninja bread. Ninja is a little bit lacking, I think, on the – on the like, I can – the spices, the full flavor on the back end, it's just coming through with the, with Hardywood. The, so you like that boozy profile, that kick in the teeth kind of – Yeah, because it's – but the strange thing is, is as much as – I like the flavor of gingerbread. Yeah. But I could not drink more than maybe two or three of these at the most. Oh, I the think that's – The Ninja is going to go down a lot smoother – Easier. So if you had to have four beers, you'd order the Ninja Bread. Correct. But if you only could have one. Which would be the bigger. You'd go well, no, with the, yeah, the smaller be a bottle. 32 of the, ounce. No, the smaller bottle. <laughs> yeah. <of> the, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. No. Dick won't so I'm going to go <laughs> one growler. Uh, one growler worth. So wait, Troy's giving a two and a half for. Who? No. What's the scale here? One to one five. To five. Five. Yeah. five being the best, one being the worst. Are we giving a grade for each How many one? fractional splits do you guys do? Usually to the point five, but a point two five has shown its head before. Whoa! Yeah, it's extreme. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go uh, with the Hardywood gingerbread. I'm gonna go with like three and a half, and I would give the Ninja a two and a half. Whoa! Big deviation. I did not expect that. Yeah, I just so full, I like the Hardywood full flavor. Like it's full flavor for me. So I just took a big swig of the gingerbread. Definitely. Boozy. I think Hogan had it spot on when you said, like, brandy. I get so much of that brandy. I bet you this thing has legs, like, if you swirled it in a glass. It's it's good. It's boozy. It's powerful. It's got all those things that a winter warmer should have. So I, I've always been a fan of it. So I'm going to have a hard time giving it less than a three and a half because it is what it is. But I also recognize the fact that I am probably a product of the hype. Because I live in the height, I'm always around the height, and I start to embrace it because it you're is a homer. Richmond. Yeah, a bit of a yeah. homer. So we're gonna give the gingerbread a three and a half. Now we're gonna go. Dun dun dun. Big swing of the ninja bread. Boom boom. So buttery. Far more balanced. Nothing's jumping out at me like in any That's direction. That's the word I was missing. Mm-hmm. Balanced. Balance, even. Yeah, it's certainly balanced. It's less of that boozy punch, so it's it's less of a warmer. If you're a big scotch drinker and like you just can't bring yourself to drink anything low ABV, this probably isn't for you. Because this is an easy drinking beer that has all those holiday spices going on. I wouldn't call it gingerbread as much, but it's pretty damn close. Like there's ginger in here for sure. Except it's the ninja ginger. And I think sneaky. That, I sneaky think that it's undercover. Ginger. And I think that's part of why they called it that, because it's got all this craziness. But it's balanced. It's undercover. Well, they got a ton of you stuff. You think they going. really thought that? Oh, yeah. These hippies? Hippies. <laughs> yeah, they thought that. But, I mean, it's got a ton of stuff going on in there. Vanilla beans, toasted cinnamon, raisins, oh, come on. molasses. What? Raisins? Caramelized, caramelized ginger. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't get caught up in the nonsense, yeah. too. It's Just tasty. go straight taste. Character. When it comes down to it, if I had to grab a bottle, either one of them. Pour it on I'm, your mustache. I'm grabbing the ninja bread. And running. I think it's a better beer. Yeah, boo. I Ooh. really do. I think it's a better beer. It's a four all day. Nice. It's a, I think it's fantastic. I could drink more than one of these, and I think that's what the gingerbread's missing. I like the novelty of it. I love what it does. Three and a half. Ninja bread for me is the better beer for. Nice. Hogan, wow. what do you got going on? Hogan's mind is blown. My mind is blown. Because I just went against all the rich people. The logo yeah. beer. But you know what? I, I like. I think it. I, I still feel like they're two different animals, and they're, they're appropriate in each situation. 
if you want to go big boozy but if you want to chug some beers you know you're it's a split so but there ninja must be. ninja I don't know if I'm Drinking. chugging. I don't know if I'm chugging either one of these beers. Are you Are you voting for the Ninja <laughs> officially? No, nope, nope. or you're just tasting, tasting it? Okay. Tasting. <clears throat> Delicious. Are you? We're we grading each one. Yeah. Yeah, I did a three and a half and a four. Yeah. And I'm damn near four and a half with the Ninja Bread. It's that good. Like I'm I'm teetering between. And you two. like the marketing hype. You like the their stu- You like their great. angle. I yeah. also, as a contrarian by nature, I tend to want to like kind of go against the grain. Yeah. It's always kind of been. No, my their favorite. marketing's better. For the Ninja. You're damn right, but that's not. It's neither here nor there. See, like now it, you're making it, me here's go more than here, Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Gingerbread's been established for a while, so like they're now the old guy at work. Ninja yeah, you know bread, what I mean. They're the old bread. guy at work. Ninja Bread's been. He's around all. He's steady. Forever. He's a grinder. He keeps showing up every year. He works hard. When did the Ninja Bread come out? I'm not. It's new school, man. No, it's these new guys. It's probably you. a millennial beer. Uh, if it's a millennial beer, does that lower it to a four two five? I bet you. Knowing how long Asheville's been in the beer scene, I bet you it's the old man in the room. Could Brewing be. Brewing that beer. So there's the Ninja Porter. When it's got yeah. a 2014 gold medal winner from the World Beer Cup. 14, 2014. So in 2017, it was top best beer. So I don't know when it really came to be, but wow. it's been around for a while. Let's see here. Yeah, it's got roots. It's got roots. It's established. That beer <laughs> is going to survive. So, have you tried the You gin- can't kill ninjas. It literally cannot. <laughs> and the gingerbread man gets killed every year. Every year. Time and time Same again. routine. Broken Head leg off. constantly. Head yep. gone Arm at some point. Arm gone. Yep. Don't yeah. fall for the tricks, man. Yeah. Gingerbread man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, take, don't take that leap. He's not going to carry you across. <laughs> That's right. He's a failure. <laughs> Focus. Focus. Trust in the ninja. Be the ninja gingerbread man. That's the one. So what do you think in between the two of them? Uh, Have you so, had a chance to dive into the... I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and vote for the Ninja Bread Man because I'm all in on A, I'm a Carolina boy. Okay, okay. It's and coming B, out. I just think it's easy to drink. It's delicious. It is yeah. festive. That's Gingerbread this. Man, Hardywood has its place and time. but So are we I giving agree. it a face, deli? Face Sounds face. like we are. Well, it depends. What are you going to give it at, uh, one to five? <clears throat> Five being the best. What would your Ninja Bread Man score be? 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. It's, it gets, it gets low balled. <laughs> no, so, no, no. Let's, let's revise. I'm going <laughs> to do a revision. I'm going to do a 375. 375. So I don't think it's going to. In the room, it can't win a deli because you gave it a. Well, I mean, three. I could. I, no, I gave it a three and a half for the. Uh, gingerbread. Gingerbread. The Ninja, the ninja Bread was, was a, a, one, a two and a half. So but I could, get, but I could go to three for the marketing that I actually think about it. So just FYI. I just don't think it's going to pull it out in the end because yeah. he voted it over and you you dogged it. This all comes down to the guy with no taste buds right Unfortunately, now. Unfortunately, that's, uh, that's what's hosing us up. Cause I can't, yeah, I can't vote. Three, seven, five, my four and a half because I'm going up now. Yeah. That makes it four. And his two and a half. That makes it four even. And his two, two and a half brings it down. Your two three, and a half. Three, seven, five. So it didn't three, get well, over the hump. My vote doesn't count because I'm... I can't vote. At best, it's three point seven five. Yeah, it didn't get over the hump. Yeah, it has oh, to get all the way. Man, that is an amazing beer to. You guys are tough. Jeff. We are tough. Oh, this it's tough. It's rare to get. Keep a deli. working, hippies. To keep working, keep working hippies. hippies. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Try harder, Asheville. Come Try on, harder. keep going. Bring it. What's Ely say? Do better. Do, Do better. better. Yep. <laughs> well, what the shit? But, but that's an amazing <laughs> beer that we're but just like. When it came down to it, on the head to head. Uh, that's that's kind of surprising. The Ninja I would, One. I yeah, think Ninja that's, that's a shocker to me. I would have never guessed that. It might not get a deli, but we would tell you to go seek it out if you're in Asheville. If you're in Asheville, if you know someone in Asheville, get them to get their hands on it because the Ninja Bread is yeah. the Ninja Bread Man is better than the Gingerbread Stout is officially what we learned today. To the point that uh, so I wanted, I want another. Just for <laughs> my ed- <laughs> j- just for my education, though. Yes. This is. Two different beers, though. A porter and a stout. So how, why, why are we doing head-to-head with them? Just ho- holiday, holiday, beer? holiday, they're holiday beer. beers. Mm-hmm. For, okay. But Just, they're in the same ballpark. They're dark beers, and they both have ginger in them. They were both stouts, for yeah. sure, to me. I'm the, I'm I'm light the beer when it comes to the beer connoisseur, I'm pretty much the newbie. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I haven't been on the big, I mean, I was a natural light guy and a Miller light guy, genuine draft guy, and then went away for a long time. Stuck to ciders and seltzers, and then 
Brendan sucked me into like trying things, and Troy was like, <laughs> "Hey, let's do this. Let's go." Uh, There's worse fates. Yeah. Trying stuff is okay. Yeah. Yeah, you've been trying any new stuff this week, Stu? You got any Stewy snack updates? Any Stew updates? <laughs> oh, so uh, any, how are we doing on the bundle bids? You got any yet? Or is it so? I actually, any? guess what, guys? I got a bid this week. Okay. Somebody bundled on my page saying they would want to go out, like to take. They, they'll take me up on the dinner. They'll take me up on nice the uh, actual stash bash and everything. Um, Unfortunately, that person is a guy, and unfortunately, that yes, person is standing on. to no, the no, left. No. Just come need on. to suck it up, dude. So take one for the Brendan team. Brendan has come to. That's excellent news. I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> That's winning, awesome. man. So uh, it's steak and scotch <laughs> That's for what Brendan. I'm talking about so it. far, steak and a scotch. <laughs> That is that is fantastic. Uh, news. He doesn't know that I'm bringing an airline bottle, and he's getting the Impossible Whopper. <laughs> You know so what? Right. To, don't don't undersell your date, Stu. <laughs> so I, I'm literally in the I'm the leader in the clubhouse with my bid. You're leading the clubhouse, but I do know some people that are interested. Stu, let's talk so, about what's going to go on in this date, just so that it's clear as to what is up for bid. So we talked about it last yeah, week. Yeah, the but person who bids the highest, do they get to pick where they eat and everything? I'm as long gonna, as it's I, Olive Garden. As long Ooh. as it's Olive. Uh, I could go for that. No, we talked about this last week. I think it's going to be. I think it, the. Dinner and the evening will be appropriate to the winning bidder. So if you are so if it's a hundred dollar winning bid, then that's a good dinner. Yeah, it's a good dinner. And but at my and twenty dollars, my scotch is not going to be what I want, is it? <laughs> right. But so like if I actually so you know Morton's is not where you're going. Yeah, the 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 that's Cajun, fine. Texas Roadhouse would be perfect. <laughs> the Cajun, Real nice. Yeah, Real for, nice. for twenty bucks, a Cajun ribeye at, at Morton's is not on the menu. <laughs> I understand that. That's fine. No. That's fine, um, but I think we should. Uh, if I'm if I'm in the lead, well, you know what? A burger so, and a scotch would be fine. So I oversold myself this past week on the uh, tender tots. Yes. So I tried to do. I tried to get a donation prior to meeting someone. Oh, you sold before wow. you met. Yes. That's but not, it was via a, put the how, cart before the horse. Not well, how tender yeah, yeah. for tots works, Stu. You go so, on the date and then yeah. you bring it up. In all your mustached glory. Right. You're looking so, at an old photo of you that doesn't have a mustache. Yeah. Right. So I, being nice, said, FYI, you've seen me on dating site. I'm I, going to meet you somewhere for a drink, said whatever. But FYI, I'm, I'm four, in six. full mustache. There's no <laughs> picture of me in this mustache. So when I walk in... So I was like being you nice. You got to make I a donation. Exp- I was explaining. Yes, I was exactly. explaining ahead of time. I was like, "Uh, I've got a mustache. Don't know whether you like it or not, but the reason is I'm doing it for the kids." And made the mistake of sending the link, ghosted. Dude, Dude you went for charity before you're you You're owning even- it too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're trying too hard. Charity Don't be scares a try people hard. away. Don't say charity. Well, I didn't say it was like, charity. I said this in. is why I'm doing it. it. It's, a, like, it's uh, a creeper. It's a yeah. creeper. Yeah, you got to let it come in. Because when you tell somebody you're doing it for charity, as soon as you say charity, 90% of the people turn away. They're well, there was dumb. probably like a few keywords, like kids, mustache. You would think. And she was <laughs> like, ooh, later. who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> i got to leave. I don't know. That's not, so, in, that's, it's not on the front page of your brochure, dude. Yeah, man. You play no, no, it. Show up and own it. You and can't then, be a tryhard. Yeah. So I, Too yeah, much. So I, I've been successful with offering it after the fact, face-to-face. Yeah, you never Learn ask the bad for the money way. until the deed is done. So it's hard to say no when you're standing right in front of them. That's right. Here's the thing. Like, if a girl comes on to you with the mustache, do you trust her? <laughs> it's a fair question. Mm. You've got to. You've got to because it can only get better if you take the mustache away. No, it gets worse. <laughs> Have you seen your face? <laughs> this is your character. <laughs> you're, you're far more handsome when you're interesting. Trust me. <laughs> oh. Okay, oh, we'll man. take we'll take that we'll take that. So into account, unfortunately, so, our no. update this there's week there's no was update this week because it's been a short week and we're ghosted moving because into, of your mustache. Yes, I got ghosted. Fair enough. Dude. It's for the kids. Look at the sacrifices we make as growers. Mm. Yes, this is heartbreaking, man. Well, if anyone yeah. does one want week, a bundle are you talking about one week though? Like that's not that big of a dry spell. Oh, I know. Oh, right. yeah. Like this dude. I mean, married guys go months <laughs> yeah it's, it's heartbreaking out here <laughs> out on the mean streets dude mustache means a lot it's tough it's it's uh i can't even get a kiss <laughs> yeah, there's a, brutal. yeah you're out there scamming money for the kids 
for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, the for the kids, kids. scamming. Jeez. The kids. <laughs> Sounded bad. Sounded bad. If you do want to donate to Stu's Mustache or any of ours, it's yes. real easy. You go over to M4K dot, m4krichmond.org, or you can just go straight to insidethepallethouse.com and click on the giant mustache banner, and it'll take you right into our team page. Don't forget, if you write bundle bid in your bids to Stu, yep. then that officially gets entered into the contest for the, uh, for the date. All the money goes to a good cause. But at least this way, you know, you might be able to get a dinner out of it. Yeah. That's a win-win. And he yeah. drags you to the stash bash, which, which I a, assure you yeah. is an absolute blast. You can't have a better time. Yeah. On and December I, I will, I will say this bash. right up front. I will not scrimp on dinner. You damn nice. right. Nice. Dinner Somebody's will be dinner. Stolen down. You need to put some food in your belly because if you go to the stash bash, you're gonna have to drive. You're me gonna home. have to. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. You're gonna have to drive. You me can home. drive automatic, right? When you're yeah. hammered. <laughs> so when needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So that's. But do go over to m4krichmond.org uh, or inside the pallet house and click on the mustache and donate to one of our growers or to Stu if you want the bundle bid. It's definitely gonna be a good time at the stash bash and. As we were saying before, 100% of your in-kind dollars will literally go directly to the charities. Now, you will get dinged for a service fee on the credit cards, and you're just going to have to pay that unless you're one of those that wants the 1945 to show up instead <laughs> yeah, of your 20. Yeah. Eh, it's kind of a weird look. you got to be honest. <laughs> I haven't had anyone do that this year. I'm quite proud of that. I haven't had anyone do yeah. it either. Do and what? The worst is everyone keeps handing me cash, and then I have to donate yeah, on their you behalf. you have to eat it, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm losing money at a tremendous rate over That's here. how I feel, too. Between I all of the donations I give to other people and then the donations that I have to pay the fee on. Yep, I got it I got it today or yesterday, got the hundred dollar check written to me. But you know what? Personally, and I was like, Respect. Okay, it's worth it. It's worth the four bucks. That's Let's right. go for it. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to I'm glad to have it. So uh, you know what? Like I just want to defend myself against like all the haters that, that give me a hard time for not raising money because I suck at raising money. <laughs> but you've created but this. The problem is is like I want other guys, everybody I know grows a mustache. Yeah. I mean, everybody I know either grows a mustache or donates because they do, right? Yeah, and so you're a leader. I, yeah, you I, leader. I want them to donate to the new guys, you know? Yeah. It's like. I actually do um, like root for the new guys because totally it gets them excited when they have a good year. Like I had a really good year last year. Now, granted, a lot of it was due to a really rough technicality, but <laughs> I had a very good year. Last year, I did a match day and I matched everyone's bets who came over here drinking that Sunday. And they, they hit you hard. Everyone well, hit me hard. And then one guy showed up oh. and decided to be the most charitable son of a bitch I've ever met. Great. And it cost me a fortune. <laughs> So it that, was a, that one felt good and bad at the same time. It was about time. an eight hundred dollar day for me. It was a Oof. it was a big day. That's big. But at the same time, it was a sixteen hundred dollar day for the kids. For the kids, for the kids. It was eight hundred dollars your pocket. See, and that's how that works. Yeah. See, but yeah. the new guys, the new guys that get in here, like that's the exponential factor that you can't factor in. Like they're having fun, they're raising big money. Heck yeah. And then they're like, oh well, guess what? I'm gonna reach out to so and so, and it goes from there. Yeah. Well, you know, when we started talking, we were, I got into this because I thought it was funny. Yeah. But then over the years, what's happened is I, I see this magic every year. Yeah. Something happens during the se grow season, and I connect with somebody who tells me a story about how their mustache, somebody wrote them this huge check, or somebody, you know, got a big lead. And, and I've, it's happened to me. I mean, I, I met a guy, one of my grower buddies, he brought a girlfriend one, one time, and she said, you know, I tithe every year. She said, I tithe 15%. That's what I do. I'm a charitable person. I give. Yeah. And she said, you don't have to just give to your church. You can give to I've other organizations. I've actually come across a few yeah. people. And so she, she, she pulled out her checkbook and wrote a $1,500 check, and she was as dead. comfortable and as happy with that Because donation. in her mind, there's a dollar amount that's going to go out every year to a worthy cause yeah. or multiple worthy causes. And I've actually come across a few of these people in, in my life. Actually, my sister-in-law is one of them, and I didn't know this, but she every year sets aside a little bit of her paychecks because she wants to make sure that she gives to things that she cares about. And when I started doing this, like she was like, this is great. You know, I absolutely want to support this. And she's been a steady donator to me every year. And I just, I realized that's, I didn't, that's you didn't know that that's about her. Yeah. I was like, yeah. she's the yeah. hero. Like right. that's They're the ones. amazing that she's like that. She thinks like that all the time. I mean, every paycheck, there's money that goes, you know, they say that they say, this is the theory of charity is that however much you open up your heart and your wallet, it comes back to you tenfold. 
I don't know if ten's the number. I kind of made that. Up. <laughs> it's ten fold, but it, it comes back to you in. But yeah, speaking, multiples. speaking yes. of ten, how easy is it? If you so just look at your social media, Facebook. How many people you have, friends wise, quote unquote, whatever that you know the definition of friend on Facebook is a little skewed. But ten bucks from one from every person on your Facebook page. Right. I have eight hundred friends on Facebook pages. If I yeah. could get. Boom. Ten bucks from each of them, which yeah. is nothing. And some would there's get 20s, nine, yeah. There, yeah. There's nine grand. There's nine grand right out of the, But, um, I mean, it's just open up. Just open up. Go for it. I mean, it's it's going for the kids. I mean, if I'm doing tender tots and I'm putting myself on an auction, you guys can do $10. <laughs> He's just embracing <laughs> tender tots. Look, I love it. it. I love it's it. Look, the whole thing about the mustache, too, it was founded in shenanigans. I mean, it it, it, it yeah. is lampoonery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and for the finest cause and, possible, and so I kind of want to bring a little more shenanigans back into it. To keep well, you it, guys have done it, a good it, job it, with the, I the think check-ins, it, the weekly check-ins, and all that stuff. You know, when we, when we wrote when we wrote those bylaws for the um for the five hundred one c three gospel, the five hundred one c three, they're like you need these, um, you need like legal bylaws, like you have to have meetings and keep track of your minutes and so forth, right? And so, so that's where that kind of. So stems I from. said, I want to write in there, somewhat put in there that we'll have the m- meetings, we'll meet quarterly or annually or whatever the our our criteria is, mm-hmm. and then I said, p- write a line item. There will be shenanigans. There will be shenanigans. Will be shenanigans. Comma the bylaws. and beer. Damn. Nice. And it's official. It's there. It is yeah. part of the organization. Regardless of shenanigans, you can donate. So you can email and donate. You can check out the website. You can even, like, and for the growers out there, you text people, and I send them the link. And if you, even if you have a flip phone, you can still receive a text message from me and donate. So, you know, Dude, but there's a new flip phone Speaking of flip phones, no, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm dying to know if we think this is a great idea or not a great idea. So everyone remembers the Razor phone. It was the first phone that was, like, truly, like, People like oh, coveted yeah. it, you know, like people would have the razor phone and be like, oh, my God, you got the world's thinnest, smallest yeah. flip phone. Now, in that day and age, I rocked a Nokia, the standard yeah. with that snake on it. Yeah. It was a hell of a game. I, in fact, for a long what time. What level? I, do you remember your level? No, but I know that I couldn't, oh, I couldn't crap without oh, playing shit. snake. Like, yeah. it was snake like a was thing. crazy. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, you think that's how they invented snake? I think, yeah, I mean, it's kind of adds up, right? But to me, it was like it was like better than a cigarette and coffee. Like, I started yeah. playing Snake and be like, oh, I got to go. Like, but the new Razer phone that they're coming out with, they're charging $1,500 for this. It's by far the most expensive phone I've seen. But it's a this foldable thing, screen. It's an honest-to-God flip phone, and the screen, when it folds open, there's no line. It's totally going like, to get a crease, though. It's, per- it's supposed to not get a crease. I mean, you're looking at it right there. It looks like a regular smartphone when it flips open. They've gotten to the point now where those foldable screens have gotten to the point where the hinge on the backside, but the, it's like a plastic instead of a, a glass, and it opens up, and it looks exactly like... A full screen. Yeah, there's no, there's no line in there. And on the outside, it's got a little tiny 2.7-inch screen where you can actually see everything, see your messages, do all that before you flip it. But then when you flip it, it lies perfectly flat, just like a smartphone. It is a very interesting phone to me. I mean, look, there's a picture right there where you can see where the hinge is. You literally cannot tell that the screen is, is two screens. Mine looks, would crack like day three. So the first year they're coming out with it, they're giving a one-year warranty on anything screen-related. So if mm-hmm. anything goes wrong, they'll fix it in that first year. Now, at $1,500, it better work for <laughs> Three or four years. Yeah, but so you need to show up your house personally and take care of your phone for fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> I look at this, and I truly think this is where things are going. Like this is all the other foldable phones I've seen have been stupid looking. They're yeah, like, it's a regular smartphone. Now it folds out to a tablet. Well, I don't want a fucking tablet. I want something that's even smaller in my pocket. Yeah, like I don't want this giant phone all the time. And I'm thinking they might actually be onto something here. I'd love to get your I think take. There's the old razor. I think yeah. they got it. Yep. If it folds and it doesn't crease the screen. Yeah, it doesn't ruin the pixels. It doesn't do anything. And it, it just, doesn't weigh your pants down. Yeah, it's thin. It's small. And then it folds out. And it's like a it's a full big ass screen. So one of the complaints I've been hearing more recently over and over again for all the new, you know, plus phones, whether it's Apple, Google, you know, Samsung plus whatever, 
is maybe not so much from guys, but the ladies are. I can't get my thumb holding it yeah. over to the other side. Oh, so this is so this awkward. is. I can't get the bigger phone because I kept going to the other side when I had the big phones, and I started getting these shooting pains in my arm. <laughs> so I switched yeah. to a smaller phone, and the pains went away. It turns out that yeah, it's the legit. ladies. The ladies and I got little thumbs, not like Troy's <laughs> little thumb. It's a whole other thing. I got yeah, a little thumb. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Looks like a toe. Doesn't it, it is a it's toe. Very isn't interesting. It? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think uh, the whole cell phone resolution is why there's there are doctors and surgeons. One who's a left thumb surgeon, and the other one who's a right thumb surgeon. They just specialize in joints. Because they so get, many people get are getting issues. Are, and are doing the, I mean, I look at my daughter. She's 14. You know, both thumbs all the time. I'm like, your joints are already gone by the time you're 25. And yeah. But, but the foldable phone's not going to s- fix that because it's still a giant screen. You know, yeah. well, case, how do you get a protective case for that? I guess you, you don't. It's not. You fold it. I, I know. I think the phone, the phone is the case. <laughs> if you drop it when it's open, it's done. Or close, uh, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how durable this thing's going to be. This is the first time it's going to come in a little pouch. I like mean, this you're is gonna, you have to carry it in a little see. pouch. They they leave that part out. It's definitely the first time I've seen a phone though that has I love done the something different. Yep. Now, fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of lot of money yeah. for yeah. a phone. I mean, that's that's obscene. But you remember when the Razor came out? It cost a fortune. Yeah. But nobody's and paying that right up front. I pay for my phones out, right? So. Save so you're not leasing them. Like yeah, I don't do like now. to lease them. Yeah, I'm weird like that. But no, that's good because you're getting over on the phone companies. Yeah, I am. Totally winning. They're like, we got winning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, winning this one. <laughs> that's, look at me. I win again. But do you guys think this is a good idea or a bad idea? I think it's got some legs. I mean, that's how I feel. Troy, do you like this idea? I'm not a phone guy. Like, I've always been two or three generations behind on the iPhone. So it doesn't, I mean, I guess it's cool. I mean, but it just seems to me... More moving parts means more, more things to break. So, I'll give you that. Now I like yeah. the idea that they're going slow, uh, smaller because these new phones, these new plus phones, are insanely large. Like, I want to be able to slide that thing in my pocket. Like, and I don't think you can with these new ones. And yeah. your skinny jeans. Yeah, I've been wearing. <laughs> I've been wearing these my jeans leggings. for years, and now I'm noticing like I've got a giant phone. A phone. Yeah, yeah that, it's horrible. Yeah. It used to be the dip can now it's a phone i always thought that was cool (laughs) oh isn't that the worst as a kid i always was like oh man that dude's sweet he's got like the ring in his (laughs) pocket (laughs) real cowboy yeah it made you it made you want to do it you're like that's pretty awesome i'm gonna drive a tractor (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna do that let's do that (laughs) no i mean i I think i had one of the old yeah but the maybe it's it's harking back to the whole i mean that was something about flipping a phone was awesome well, well it was, says it right here. It says hanging up on someone with the razor is awesome. It's a joy is what they say because, like, you can close slam it on them. At what point, though, do you, face. Go, do you go, Ugh. Yeah. I mean, it's got to have limitations. I'm sure the cameras aren't what they were, but this is the first gen. Yeah. Yeah. I think if, if enough people buy this, we're going to be we're going to see a change outright. It will phones. sell. Now, of doubt. course, I've been the worst at predicting everything on yeah. the show, so I'm probably way off and this will flop. They're but going look, after all the Star Trek fans. I know. The, hey, look, uh, I'm going to give them a big, a big <laughs> tip. Open. Here you go, tech industry that's listening. <laughs> oh, they are. Make it a slap bracelet. <laughs> the whole there phone. You go. <laughs> slap bracelet. <laughs> slap bracelet phone. So you're talking. You're like, I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> Actually, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> it's kind of like I, I, I have moments of accidental genius it's in like my a, life. Like an Apple Watch. Like an Apple Watch. Like an Apple Watch. You just slap it right on. I guess we're not that far from it if we yeah, can fold yeah. a phone and it looks absolutely perfect like this. Yeah, I'd like to buy a suit made out of that stuff and put a really handsome man in it. <laughs> make make my shoulders look wide, you know? My right, whole well, suit I'm, is I'm, a, I'm a 44. LCD screen. You're looking for a handsome man to put a suit on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crazy thing is they're using the same technology that when I was selling billboards, we were talking about it, future pacing, that eventually the vinyl wrap that's the print that goes on a billboard is the is screen. now going to be the screen and it doesn't matter how you fold or do whatever you can just throw it up it's flexible if it's t- the if same it's technology connected. so it's like you can just put a digital billboard anywhere you don't have to build the whole frame you just hang it up so i mean the tech's getting there it's going to be crazy but i mean the other thing too is this is not going to appeal to uh anybody that's an apple user 
Well, this no, because it's all Android. Yeah, but Android if enough if enough people start embracing this, then Apple will have to, you know, do what they do and pretend. But this is one up then. Yeah, who wouldn't buy this for their? Okay, you, me, everybody here, right here. This is this is my mom's phone. But I'm going to buy this for my mom because she's like, this I is what I used phone. to. The flip phone was what well, was out us, there. Well, to us, this is first. nostalgic. So right. millennials never saw a flip phone. So to them, they're like, what's the point? You know, like we they, we came up in flip phones. So I mean, that was, and it was the first thing you could do to get away from the stupid Nokia. Yeah, the you know, Nokia. You, you moved over to the flip phone. Yeah, I mean, people like, today I don't they don't know about they don't know the, the struggle. They don't know. Typing, punching the same button four times to get a letter C. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's three in the times. Past. Three times. Four. A, B, three. C. But, I mean, you first, do you. In the first one, three? I don't, oh, I don't recall I don't that. Three. A, I don't know. I remember for the longest time I refused to te- text two. people oh, because yeah. I had that. Might be yep. two. Yeah. Just give me a beeper. Oh, I'll call I you back when I want to. Would. <laughs> yeah. I'll get a beeper, Stu. 24 hours, I'll get back to you. If you can start taking donations on a beeper, you should absolutely do You're that. winning. That tech- yep. You are winning. So if you beep or text. <laughs> How, bundle what would a millennial number. think of a beeper? They probably think it's the coolest shit ever. It's like a walkie-talkie. You get I mean, your typewriter and your beeper. Beeper was the coolest thing ever. Then all of a sudden it got associated with like. Wall Street. The, well, Wall Street. But then it went to like. Drug the, dealers. The drug dealers. Drug dealers and doctors, Beep on which the, yeah. they're the same thing. <laughs> yeah, technically. To be honest. They're passing the same yeah. stuff off. Yeah. One's just prescription. <laughs> There's no difference. That line has been blurred. Ask Prince. <laughs> <laughs> too soon. Oh, is that too early? <laughs> too, too, oh, soon. too soon. Oh, my bad. No, no, my no, bad. No. All right. Sorry, Prince fan. Joaquin River Phoenix? <laughs> yeah. Is that old yeah, enough? That's enough. Go back yeah, yeah, far yeah. Enough? Okay, there we go. Heath Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. too soon. Safe. Safe. Okay. He's been dead like 12 years. <laughs> There's the line. Safe. There's 12 the years? Line. He's been what? dead like over 10 years. Safe. Yeah, decades. Crazy. Been, we'll take it then. We'll take it. That's that's the one. Mm. So what's the... Um, just saw a damn light flick on behind me. Yeah. I didn't know Are you going to turn the power off again? No, I or just turn didn't it back know. On. Didn't Does know your wife do that when it's time to turn off the podcast? <laughs> So he's flicking the switch. No, I was just afraid Ely was going to walk in. Then we'd have to come up with a way to do 30 more minutes. And I, was, I was one topic away from shutting this down. Yeah. If you want peek behind the scenes of where I am. <laughs> so Only with worry about Ely showing up at this you, point. You never know, though. That guy is a, he's a Marine. He's not a ninja, but he's a Marine. Sneaky. So anything's possible. Sneaky good. But he would have had to shave in his proper mustache in order to show up because he didn't want to show up in front of Hogan right. without it. That's right. So he's been he shaved clean and then he just started growing in kind of the fake because he had like some some work thing. I'm letting the cat out the bag on him. But he's at sixty dollars donation. You think there's a think there's a correlation? Penalty. correlation. There's a penalty. Yeah. yeah. There's an absolute correlation there. People are donating to us and his mustache is just out there <laughs> growing into his chin. It's ludicrous. So should we have a fine for not meeting your goal mustache wise? I'll let Raising? you know after I reach my goal. Because then you <laughs> should say, no, should be like, uh, you rude. have to wear it for another week because <laughs> you didn't hit your goal fundraising wise. I love shaving <laughs> off the mustache at the end of this. It's, I'm not going to uh, it, it, it is a, it's a tasty treat. But I recommend going to the pencil thin for a day. Uh, dude, I, I come home all drunk and I just rip that thing right off. It's oh, gone. so that night, my ex wife, my ex wife brought the razors. The Clippers with her to the stash. To the stash, stash. Which we've often thought that <laughs> there's money to be made if you could have some Clippers there and allow the wives to donate one last time to shave it. Yeah, like there could be money made. You know, kind of that last that last A final day drive. Push. Yeah, we yeah. could auction off Brendan to the highest bidder. Some lady gets to shave her beard. Doesn't have to be your wife. No one's gonna. Who wants to shave Brendan? No one's auctioning <laughs> off my mustache. And it might be a short sale, yeah. And, and, and for the record, we don't want that much money coming in. <laughs> oh. Because oh. the women would, would line up and be out the block. Fighting would ensue. <laughs> yes, it'd be. It'd be well, so I, I, they're, tell me, they're tell me what tr- you guys think about bringing back this shenanigan. Because in the early days, we used to do the strongest stash. I heard about that the other day. That sounds awful. You, it was. It was. We would put roach clips on a on a uh, cup, and you, or how about electrical clips? Put them I'm on a cup. Familiar with those <laughs> <laughs> roach clips, maybe electrical. <laughs> and then we would load the cup with weights, and whoever could lift the cup off the table before it pulled had the, the hair strongest, out? Stash. strongest stash. 
It was amazing. That, those were really good competitions. I am not opposed to feats basically, of strength. That feats is, of strength is really fun. Basically, who can take the most pain is what that is. No, because if you lift it, you're good. When it pulls all the hair out, yeah. you're done. And then a foam <laughs> retention contest. Oh, who can oh. <laughs> foam retention. It was always Guinness. Guinness. I was about to say, I'll just get yep. a Guinness and win if yeah. everyone else got Bud yep. Light. Nope, it's between Guinnesses. Everybody I has mean, a Guinness. I'm already a fan of this this concept. Let's start getting some Guinness, yeah. some Roach Clips. Oh, this sounds like college. It is like college. <laughs> <laughs> what is, this reminds me of something. That's, but it's for the kids. A, a faded memory. Yes. Man, I'm I all for the shenanigans. No, I think more shenanigans. It's in the bylaws for fuck's sake. It is in the bylaws. Yeah. This, is, this is how you get to be a 5013. 503. What is it? 50133. That's the one. That's how you get to be that. Yeah. Shenanigans. And such. And you always keep it gray. Just a little gray area. And keep it pure. Keep, keep it, it real. Pure. That's what ours. This, that's, that's why we love M4K. It's the most real of all of them. Dude, Hogan, it's been great meeting you, man. This, this was, was awesome. awesome. This was a lot of fun. You wrapping it up for us too? Is that what that just was? That no, was, sounded no, this like it. Me. I was gonna, he was I'll putting me in nighty night time. No, this I'll is me it. saying I got no other topics on my screen. I was going to talk about my my dogs one ball, but we'll just let it be. Your dogs one ball. <laughs> we'll talk about one that ball. Next week. Yeah, unfortunately, one ball dog is what I got, and we went to the vet again. What happened to the other? Still one, one ball. We'll never it know. never dropped. It never dropped so far. I mean, we're only four months into this thing's life, so I mean, we still got time. But every time I go to the vet, they're like, eh, "You still got time." And then today. No joke. Woman's up there looking for the ball. She goes, oops, lost the other one. I was like, what the hell? She fired his ball back up. Inner space? Yeah, so I lost. <laughs> he went from one ball to no balls today, and then I think she was able to get it out. But he learned something today, and it was not something I wanted to see on such a young man. They were working the nuts. They were kind of doing the thing, and all of a sudden – the dog just starts humping like crazy. Yeah. And they're like, oops, oops, I think your dog just came. I was like, he's four months old. You can't make him come. <laughs> that's like, that's oh. ridiculous. So real quick, I follow. You've got a story that segues on that? <laughs> yes, to follow up real quick. Be careful. I reach. I, uh, yes. Not reach, okay. Not to, I look back up. So most dogs, to follow up with last week's segment about dogs age and how old they are and the new math. Okay. I yep. researched it a little bit more. Dogs, all dogs, by the time they are two years old, are middle age. Well, that's what the that's what the stats were saying last week. We were right, but I, I looked at another survey from the University of California, and they're standing and by it. And this was completely different. Same like DNA methylation breakdown, all that good stuff. But dogs, by the time they're two, three years old, they're middle age because the dog ages significantly in the first two three years. years. And then after that, it's slow as hell. So basically, your dog is a middle-aged sex addict at three years old and goes from there. And then it's all downhill. Yeah. The next 10 years. Well, that explains the four-month nut on the vet table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was really awkward. It prime. It but was if he, really awkward. So were they, I was they like, were, I've never seen him do that. He's going to love going back to the vet. <laughs> I've never, at least he's yeah. not going to be afraid of the vet. So he, yeah, he, he does, he does, tail <laughs> starts wagging like crazy well, let's outside. Go. He doesn't have oh, a... Oh, finally, <laughs> back to the jack shack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't the have massage one. parlor. <laughs> yeah. And so he's missing a nut, and they're trying to get rid of the other one. They're just trying to change him completely. Yeah, maybe we just shift him over. It's yeah. current. It's modern. It's current. <laughs> yeah, by 2020, he'll fit right in. Actually, that'd be great. Yeah. You can make a lot of money on this dog. There you go. This is not bad. Circus act. It's not bad. You're on to something. I like it. <laughs> I like where this is going. I've been to the vet like a dozen times. Yeah, he's well, he goes to the vet all the time because I'm trying to get him all his shots because of this damn dog park situation we're running into. I want him to have his shots. Yeah, God, don't take him to a dog park. That's like a penitentiary. No, no, no. no, no, no. So Here. every every Sunday now, I, I installed a fence, and now everybody's like, oh, I'll bring my dog. Uh, and so I end up, last week we only had four dogs out here. That's like a fine number of dogs to be tearing around. But there was one week, there were seven dogs back there, and I was like, this is this is getting a little so ridiculous. It's been, like, I don't want that many dogs. Uh, it's dog. been four weeks since he installed the fence. And Brendan got lucky until yesterday. Yesterday was, I think, the first day during a Sunday he stepped in it. Oh, I did. I stepped in a giant. <laughs> I was turning, oh, and I no. just felt that I, Landmine. I swiveled much too quickly when yeah. I was doing my, my rotation. I was like, oh, that was awfully lubricated. I was like, son of a bitch. Son of a gun. Eh, it was they what love, it was. There's something about your yard. They love to dig. Yeah, it's great. When news. they're not shitting, they're digging. All I do is plant seed and mow and work on the yard. The dogs come over and go, I bet we can <laughs> end this real quick. This. <laughs> dogs are, why do we have them? 
I, I, I got I got a a um a white lab. She's beautiful, just most submissive dog, piece of cake, That's easy, perfect. Already keep trained, you know. She just knows what I'm thinking. And I took her to the um to the dog park at uh, Maymont. And that was like dropping like a virgin off in the penitentiary. Oh. Yeah, I mean she got it, annihilated immediately. Like my kids were re- were mountain biking around, and they showed up, and I was standing there. I was frozen because I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to be rude, but I was like, everybody's dog is humping my dog. Like, <laughs> That's this horrible. Is just, and she was just laying there, like, oh god, looking at me, like, what, what's going on? And I'm like, get up, fight for yourself. Like, what have you done? Why? Yeah. But the dog's probably like, what have you done, ass? Yeah. Why'd you yeah. bring Why'd me you here? Why'd you bring me here? That's what, that <laughs> yeah. was the look she had on her eyes. That's the look I would have on my I face. Know. Like, why'd you drop me off here? It's horrible. Sorry, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Roxy. <laughs> oh, man. I'll never do it again. Dog parks are rough. It was rough. They are. And that's why. It traumatized my kids, too. They'll never forget it's it. It's like the worst people, that the worst dog owners go to dog parks. They just let, it's like kids at a playground like they just let their dogs go and they don't like police them or yeah, watch them yeah, or anything that's how it was yeah, it's like coming to brendan's pallet house yeah there's a fence we'll just let them go it seems to be the new <laughs> mo around here it was better when there were holes in my fence and the dogs would run away people bring them once and go yeah i'm not bringing my dog back there yeah. and they'd be like good yeah it's then fine. the train comes by and i have one less dog damn Stu, <laughs> how am i supposed to end on that note that was <laughs> just fucking horrible man Trying to raise money for children out here. I was chasing my dog all the way over. Mustaches <laughs> are supposed to be friendly and fun and fun loving, which Hogan, I got to thank you, man, because you did start this thing and it's it's been going Amazing. many years and over the course of the last however many years, it's what's like one point three million dollars that we've pumped into children's charities here in the Richmond area. Uh, that's that's nothing to be ashamed of, man. You should be damn proud of what you've done. I am. I'm not going to lie. I go to those meetings, and I just feel pride. You should, I man. I really do. You've got people who... So many good guys, too. They Every, are. And all they, the growers are just a, like... They have that similar sense of humor. It's great. It's fantastic, man. And I don't know how you rounded up such a good crew, but you certainly did, and they, uh, they raised money for a damn good cause, man. You've done a really good job of of sussing out the right causes in the area to, to work with. And I thank you for that because it allows me to go out and, and work on getting these, these donations and know in my heart of hearts that I'm doing the right thing. So for that, I thank you. It sounds like you've had to remove some organizations in the past. You brought in new organizations. So and brought in Ben, ben Kiefer. Ben Kiefer took it to a whole nother level. That yeah, dude that works guy solid. is a grinder, and he's, he's got a gift. And well, and he's what embraced he's done the podcast, for this, he, so I like him a lot. <laughs> he has brought this thing to <laughs> levels that, like, really, when you guys talk about hitting three hundred grand and three hundred fifty grand, I mean, that's Kiefer. That's where Kiefer was like, you know what? You guys have something that's cool here, but I know how to turn this into something amazing. And he took it to the next level. Well, he certainly awesome. has. Now, I, I, I just remember when it was a shitty band playing at the old uh, Marquee Band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that shitty band had to practice for like three months to get that gig. Well, you got the gig. Hey, did you notice? Like, I, nobody even noticed because, you know, it's a stash bash. So, but each song was tailored. Those songs were individual mustache related. related songs. We changed That's the words awesome. in every song that we knew to well mustache played. songs. Yeah. That's how it's It took done. us forever. That was a really. In well, I thought project. you did a damn good job, and you've done a good job through this whole thing. So, again, thank you so much. If anybody does want to donate, you can donate to Dave. You can donate to us. Go over to m4krichmond.org. Find the grower that you most relate to and want to help out and throw a donation their way, knowing that uh, the money's going to go to the right place. It's going to go to a good cause. And there's always a good pair of sunglasses that pairs up with a mustache. Always, always. Look, there's a lot, there's a lot worse ways to spend your money. This is not one of them. This is a good way to spend your money, your hard-earned money, and know that it's going to a good cause. No one deserves it more than the children. And uh, no one deserves it more than the guys who are growing mustaches, making us look good. We thank you so much. Hogan, thank you again so much for coming out. We thank you guys for playing it. along. Absolutely. If you guys want to donate, again, if you want to donate to our team, head over to InsideThePalletHouse.com. Click on the giant mustache link. It'll take you right to our team page. We can use the donations. If you want to uh, get 30% off sunglasses, go to Nectarsunglasses.com. Drop ITPH in the coupon code. Yeah, I said 30%. It's a hell of a deal. If you want to send us topics, go over to our Facebook page. Or you can always reach out to us at InsideThePalletHouse at gmail.com or at ITPH Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We'll be talking to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Peace out.
That was a really good podcast, don't you think? 